subscribe or this will happen to you. <laughs> yeah, you're not subscribed yet. Come on. Right, we are back in the UK, in the Scotland. We've been back home for a couple of days. My voice is still a little bit scratchy. So we're just gonna go over a quick recap of World's Strongest Man. Obviously for Tom, it was all right. It was all right, for me, not so all right. But yeah, so this is our thoughts of World's Strongest Man 2020. What was your scariest part? The hurricane. The hurricane? I'm being locked up in my what room. What's a hurricane? What is a hurricane? A windy thing, huh? What was the highlight of World's Strongest Man this year? I think for me personally was watching Tom win the the log press. Oh, yes! Come on! That's it! And he did it wearing those daft shades as well. That was quite funny. I was like fourth or something in that in a position I didn't want to be in before that event. Um I wanted top three and I was thinking to myself, if I mark this log up, I'm not gonna get on the podium. Things kept going through my head that I was getting worried with, but then Luke just said to me, you know, you can win this and you can and just believe. And I took my my time and didn't have anyone there to chase. A lot of the guys kind of made mistakes because they were chasing each other. But yeah, when I got announced that I won it, I was shocked, but I was pleased because I think that was a change of kind of me getting onto the podium. Now. But that was my favourite. Definitely winning the log. Novikov had a beast of a performance for me. I think he was... The, the standout athlete throughout, he just smashed every event. First time to make the final and for him to win the World's Strongest Man in his first ever final. Him and Tom were the, the two kind of standout performances by a, by a mile. I'm going to say uh, Luke Richardson. I think he was getting a lot of stick from people which in my eyes don't deserve to give him stick because at the end of the day he's Europe's strongest man. He's 23 years old so he's younger than Novikov, he's younger than me and that was his first ever time competing at Worlds, mm. one year in the sport and he's got to World's Strongest Man. I think Luke did awesome, I think he came in and, and achieved massive. He's achieved more than 90% of the mm. strongman I've achieved. But then, you know, Luke's got to realise that, that these people that kind of say, like, bum him up, um, when he's winning the competition, you know, he's won Europe's Strongest Man, oh, Luke's the future in this, and he is genuinely going to be a World's Strongest Man, I believe, but for these people then to come and be negative to him and, and kind of say this stuff is just really... Um, pathetic and childish. Just listen to the people that are They're supportive. Right. Yeah, that want to support you yeah. from, so from the lows and highs. Luke's you know. got his own close group of friends. Um, I class Luke's a, a good friend of ours as well. Always welcome up to the, the Highlands, Luke, you boy. Always got a bed for you. It's a super king size as well, Luke. <laughs> Luke's a super king size. On the bed. Sleeping spoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, so I know the coffin, Luke. I, I learned not to expect to get my good events in, in the heats or whatever. Really work in my kind of weaker events and not have any um, not have any weak events then going into the finals next year. Making sure everything's kind of tightened up, everything's, you know, I can get points and everything. I should be a more well-rounded athlete. What did I learn? Jeez. Peanut butter and jams are dynamite. Nathan, thank you very much for that. Oh, well, I made your sandwiches for you, wasn't it? Did you? I thought the canteen lady did it. No. Oh, well, that's a big shout out to Luke. I learned to take my time in events and maybe not think about other people. I think this year I went in thinking of myself only and not what other guys were going to do. So, like, I had Novikov, Trey, and Max in my group, like, three of the best stone lifters in the, way, in the world. And before that, I was like, if I, if I get Max in my group, if I get Max for stones, I'm going to lose. If I get Trey, I'm going to lose. I think I'm learning more now to mentally think about just what I need to do instead of what others need to do. Do you have anything in place to help you improve your next year? Yes, so we ordered up a Hercules hold um, as soon as we landed in London. We got that ordered up and 80 kilo dumbbell and 100 kilo dumbbell with a 3 inch handle. A 3 inch diameter handle so they've been ordered, they're getting made. Stopped doing like our online training as well so we can concentrate more on training looking into maybe taking someone in to help with like orders and stuff so we're not spread too thin. I think that's the most important thing for Tom and I is just to be able to concentrate on training and be able to train every event that we can and do it like week in, week out. Yeah, all we needed to get was a Hurtley's hole and dumbbells and that's what we did. And we're going to do that religiously week in. We can. See with your placings this year, are you guys happy with it? Personally speaking, I don't think I gave a good account of myself. 
um, where I finished obviously not making the finals. Uh, I'm not even getting into the stone off, it wasn't the best. But that's a good thing now in Worlds is that everyone is capable of making the final that, that, that's there. So the so you have to work hard in training mm. and, and that's because you can't just now walk into it. Like Brian Shaw can't just walk into it now and be like, well, I'm going to do this to win. He, you have to go 100% and everything. Mm. So. That's a good thing now. I was pleased with my second, but annoyed. It's a, you know, people say it's a good result, but I wanted first. I wanted the podium, but then when you look back at it, it's like I could have won the one world strongest man um, a year earlier than I wanted to. It was my best opportunity to win it. It wasn't a Hercules hold up, Cody. No, people think, oh, you came last in the Hercules. That's what cost you the title. It was the first event that cost me the title. Um, I think I would have been faster than Bishop, or even if I came top two in that event, I would have won the overall. So that's the thing that's kicking me the anvil, I have nightmares of the anvil. Winning for the event means nothing if you've come second or third, so you still just always want to improve and I'll be better next year. With all the COVID restrictions this year, do you feel like it affected your performance at all? Um, <clears throat> not really, no, I think we were in a good position going into it, we've got the, our own gym, also we trained enough for that when we went out there, everything was pretty easy when we got there, um, we were all in this bubble. So all the athletes were staying in the hotel. I preferred it how it was because there was nobody else in the, re in the hotel so you didn't get any fans you know, coming up for photos and stuff. You were just actually food, mm. sleep, strongman, which is what mm. we trained for when we were at home. So it's just exactly the same but in a different country. I enjoyed it. To be honest, if Worlds could be like that every year, I would not mind that. Favourite strongman in a ranking of who you think is best and why? So I'm going to leave Tom out of it because obviously Tom would be my favourite. The one that I look up to the most or want to replicate would probably be Brian. I think just with his success in Strongman and his success like business-wise, you know, the merchandise and everything else that he's got going on. The nicest guys I was speaking to was Big Gavin Bolton as well. Um, uh, I've never spoke to Gav really before, but with a, a good chat and he was he came out. He was really nice, great guy. Just unfortunately got injured and Paul Dwyer as well, he was, he's just good fun. I like Terry, Terry Holmes is good, is good now. Mm. I, when you spend time with him and stuff, he's mm. a really good guy and he's been, he's again like Brian Shaw, been mm -hmm. around for the scene for a bro and one you look up to, so yeah, Terry, Brian. I, th I think one that I was interested in hearing your opinions on um, was the idea that whoever wins would have an asterisk next to their name because of people falling out, like, mm. what was your opinion on that? I I think that's BS. What's that strict? Like so, it's like like an exemption because Matthias isn't there. Thor is not there. Yeah, but you beat who was there. Yeah. And to be honest, yeah, just because Kalikowski wasn't, he wasn't going to win it this year. He was injured. Kalikowski would have won it. Lissis wouldn't have won it. If they were there, you'd step up your game even more. You know, you step Novikov won. He stepped up his game to beat us. He would have stepped up his game to beat whoever else was there. Mm. I would have stepped up my game. It doesn't matter. I hate when people say that, you know, it's like the same with Luke Richardson when he won Europe's, you know, he didn't beat us, but he beat who, who was there, he's Europe's strongest man for a reason. Novikov is the world's strongest man for me personally, and if anyone does want to put an asterisk next to their name, then I would just say wait until you watch it on, on TV and see the level of the calibre of athletes that are competing, it's incredible. Um, so I think this year's one of the, the best world's strongest, as a fan, first and foremost, I think it's one of my favourite years to, to watch and be kind of part of it all because the talent was that um, that thick throughout, you know, it was that high that anyone could have won it. Thanks for watching, leave some happy birthday wishes to Luke and uh, have you got an early birthday present as well? Comment below if you know what it is. Stay safe, smile and stay spicy. And keep and get us to 100k, please. Keep ringing that little bell. <laughs>